Hello everyone, welcome to Officers on Duty. I'm Pooja Alangbam, IAS 2018 batch. I'm currently posted as SDO Porumpat, Imphal East. Today I'll be talking about my postings, starting from my first posting. So after completing phase two, I came back to Manipur and I got my first posting as SDO Lumfell in Imphal West. Uh, it was completely new and exciting for me because it was my independent posting after probation. Uh, but I was, you know, passionate and raring to go and take up whatever was required. As an SDO, our main work is with regard to revenue and law and order. Uh, so with revenue work, we have a lot of case hearings uh, with, you know, if there's any land dispute, revenue dispute among people, uh, it works under the Manipur, uh, you know, MLR, LR Act. So people come to you and they present the case and we have, uh, I used to have two days set for hearings uh, with regard to revenue. So on these days, uh, you know, people come either themselves or with their lawyers and they present the case and I hear both sides and uh, sometimes it takes two, three hearings for it com to come to a conclusion. Uh, my idea is that I always try to uh, bring to a resolution where both parties agree. As much as possible, I try to make people compromise because I think that's the best way in terms of land. Sometimes land disputes happen mostly between relatives, even within families. So I don't, I don't feel nice when you know people quarrel, and I feel I'm sure that even they themselves don't feel nice when they quarrel among within their own families. So I try to make it as amicable as possible. Of course, if nothing else works, I have to resort to uh, you know the strict letter of the law and the rules another time was when i i faced a woman a widow so you know her brother-in-law and her parents-in-law were trying to deny the land uh, you know which was supposed to be given to her husband after her husband died so i made sure and especially as a woman i understand her plight and that's something which really moved me because many people don't know that under the hindu succession act all uh, progeny are you know, entitled to land from their parents, including women. And so I think, uh, you know, especially with regard to uh, land, a lot of women don't inherit land because their family don't allow it. But I feel that a woman can, can and should demand for their share. So I think that's one of the things which I try to tell whenever people come to me for these cases. Another thing is with regard to uh, law and order, I have been in situations uh, which has been very tense. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, it it's actually helpful to be a woman in this kind of situations because I feel we are much calmer in this kind and we don't, we're not quick to anger. At least I feel, I, I don't know about everyone, but for, for myself, you know, I try to approach even the most agitated protesters. I try to approach them, I try to talk to them. Of course, it, they don't always uh, listen to me, but at least I try from my side. And even when they try to taunt me, uh, you know, I, I try to stay as calm as possible. Uh, but sometimes I realize that I always need to carry a pair of sneakers because when we come to office, we come in saris, uh, we come in, you know, our heels, but suddenly, the situation happens there's tear gas tear gas firing or you know situation protesting so we have to rush to the place so you have to make sure you have comfortable you know shoes so that's what i want to tell all the aspirants so if you ever become an officer uh, you know always carry comfortable shoes in your car because you never know when you need it when you have to run sometimes because people are pelting stones or you know there's tear gas or something you never know when the situation happens like that so you have to take care of yourself you have to take care of your people and you have to try as much as possible to calm down and never get agitated because I've seen people, even the calmest of people, sometimes the crowd will try to provoke you. And th this has happened to me luckily so far. I mean, I haven't been provoked to that extent where I start shouting or screaming. Uh, but you know, it is uh, likely. So you have to be always careful with that. After that, my second posting is as SEO Forum part. I came here mainly for elections since we cannot be in our home district. Uh, so this is where I came. and. Election, uh, we had we recently conducted the Manipur state legislatively uh, legislative elections and I was the returning officer for two assembly constituencies and it was an very exhausting but amazing learning experience because you we had very limited staff and we had to make sure everything went well. Uh, from planning it six months ahead, you know, we went to every polling station to make sure they had adequate facilities. Uh, we had to start training the polling personnel, uh, making sure that 
uh, you know, they knew exactly what the, how they were supposed to uh, conduct these elections. And uh, what was very wonderful for me is that uh, we had all women polling stations for both my assembly constituencies. So only women polling, uh, you know, personals conducted the entire elections and uh, training them. Uh, you know, initially they were very hesitant because you know they were like we are women we don't know how the situation will be like and they have to stay overnight also so many of them were apprehensive about staying overnight and you know how the toilets will be how they get water food and some of them had small children so as much as possible for you know pregnant women lactating women we did not let them go for this duty however uh, other those who are working in social welfare organizations uh, or you know self social welfare department forest uh, especially teachers we have abundant of women teachers and so we train them for three rounds um, they ask a lot of questions I remember my voice was gone completely and you know uh, we had to manage the transportation training uh, everything and it was a very time I don't think I slept properly for three months uh, we, there was time there were times when I didn't even I've even forgot to eat food because we didn't have time. I was constantly running from one place to another and uh, it was exhausting but I think it's an experience for a lifetime and you know if, because election is something I think every government serv servant will be actually working on in one quantity or the other so whether I'm an RO right now or as a DEO or as a CEO or you know so even election commissioners they're all government servants so one way or the other election is something we all have to face and to actually face it as a returning officer to meet the candidates uh, you know to actually read the affidavits go through it and model code of conduct you know when you go for the model code of conduct one of the things which I faced uh, was that the moment the model code of conduct is announced we have to take down all the political posters of every candidate so I sent most of my staff to do that the police also helped but in the end I also went for a round to check if everything has been removed as soon as possible under the mandate of the election commission of India uh, unfortunately I got a call from one of my staff saying that he has been held hostage uh, by a bunch of party workers for taking down their flags uh, apparently they were very angry that he took down their flags and probably they also did not know about it uh, that you know it's mandated mandatory uh, so immediately I called up the OC and uh, he said he's also coming but I was also nearby so I don't know if it was very smart or <laughs> or stupid but I also rushed to the spot and without waiting for the police I also went right into where he was being kept hostage by around 50 60 people they were very agitated so the first thing i did was try to calm them down and say that i'm the returning officer and even if this person has made any mistake you know please forgive him because my first thing was to get him out because he had been punched on the face or slapped or punched on the face so my first instinct was just to get him out safely and make sure that everything after that the police will arrive and handle the situation so I talked tried talking to the crowd they didn't let him go for five minutes we negotiated in the end finally I managed to get him out and then the police came and calmed the situation down so this is the kind of uh, you know environment we face sometimes and it can be really scary uh, and then later on my parents were angry because they said that I shouldn't have been so foolish to go alone I should have waited for the police so I don't know if it was the right call but I think these are the things sometimes we do and that's the kind of situation you face as an IAS it's not always glamorous it's not always sitting in the office as we always show in you know social media sometimes I mean we don't always show the parts where it's you know it's because these are sensitive issues and we cannot show it on social media so I hope that the aspirants also understand uh, that there's you know an aspect of this job which is very difficult sometimes you won't get to sleep sometimes you won't get to eat uh, for a long time so you have to be prepared for that so one of the initiatives which I took outside of my official responsibility uh, is the book club in Fal. Uh, we recently had a literary festival called Bibliomania and uh, you know we got a great response from a lot of crowd especially the younger crowd my uh, motivation to this initiative was when i came back after my is training in 2019 and uh, i used to put up a lot of the books i was reading on social media and people kept asking me you know for recommendations so i thought let's have a meetup and see how many people are genuinely interested in 
talking about books and reading books and recommending it to each other so i put up a place and a time on social media and around you know 60 70 people arrived on the first day so we had regular meetings like that for two three times after that we decided to actually formalize it and actually set up an organization where we can do more things related to books so we had quizzes based on books for school kids college kids we even had a civil services seminar for people who are interested in taking it up as you know who are aspiring for it uh, so i feel you know even though it's a hobby i feel it's trying to reach out to people give the joy of learning uh, which i was lucky to have from my teachers and from my parents and another thing is also with regard to how the youth Uh, in Manipur are being misled to drugs and alcohol uh, you know we see a high prevalence among them in Manipur so i felt that to actually draw them away from that because they are so energetic and so passionate that their uh, you know passion must be utilized in something productive and i felt that the book club was a platform to draw people in and to make them use their time while they're in school or college or while they even waiting for a job you know they do something fun and they learn from it and many of them have gone to do jobs as psychologists they have gone to do uh, you know careers as uh, you know in hotels uh, as academics and they're still participating in it so the so the last 3 4 years has been amazing and i have learned so much from it i have learned how to organize better how to organize events in a small amount of time how to crowd fund how to source funds how to you know make it uh you know to actually have a little bit of profit so that we can run this organization so all these things have actually helped me and i think it also reflects in my work and how i organize things and how i delegate my work so that i'm not the only one running around for everything another initiative was i which i took up was with regard to covid uh you know when the covid situation uh, catalyzed in manipur and Manipur was actually one of the places where the covid hit late because after the cases went down in the other parts of the country it started resurging in Manipur uh, and uh, we felt that you know uh, we really need help not just from the government because of course the government was trying its hardest but it would be great if we got help from other parts other civil society organizations so i sent out a message to uh, you know friends and organizations which i knew and they contributed uh, you know 50 oxygen in cylinders uh you know 50 oxygen concentrators i mean thousands and thousands of masks and sanitizers which i distributed to all this community quarantine centers so i worked with around 10 community quarantine centers where this positive cases were kept and uh, we made sure that even if there was any emergency case where they needed oxygen they were given a free supply of mask and you know uh, of sanitizers and i used to go almost daily to this quarantine center to talk to them obviously from afar while they are inside the room so we used to have a mic we used to have you know even song sessions sometimes to motivate them to feel better that they will get better soon so uh, i think covid even though you know we lost many lives i think the community came together the government also worked really hard but people came out to volunteer in this community quarantine centers uh, you know doctors nurses i mean i learned so much from them and they also collaborated and cooperated with us and i'm so thankful to so many foundations and you know civil society organizations who have also helped us for aspirants out there who are studying for this exam uh you know i would like to tell you that it is a wonderful service but also be aware that it's very challenging you have to work really hard even after you get through uh the exams and actually i feel the real test is what you actually do after becoming an officer or what kind of initiatives you take up and the kind of character you have your uh, you know interaction with the public with your staff uh you know i myself am an introvert uh, and i think many of you are as well uh but you don't have to be worried about it because i think once you get into this service automatically you realize that you have to uh you know work on your communication skills on your people skills and that's also what i did i think it happens gradually as well but you also have to work 
consciously on it uh, i was lucky to have friends and family uh, who are very interactive and they always encourage me to come out and speak out my mind and speak out my opinions so i hope you don't forget to do that sometimes as junior officers we tend to be a bit quiet but i think once we work our way and we you know get promoted uh, come in senior positions we also have to give voice to our opinions and i think no matter how you know if and you also have to listen to opinions even if it's the you know lowest ranked staff i think because they have had years of experience and more than you you know many of my staff had been working for 20 30 years and when they told me with regard to this situation elections it's better to do this i think i found that they were actually quite right so it's good to listen to them obviously the ultimate decision is always yours uh but it's always good to listen to as many people as possible and uh, to always interact with as many people as possible sometimes in the services we only meet and interact with people from the services and that makes us slightly narrow minded so i think i encourage all of you to actually meet people from all walks of life i'm lucky to have a husband who's a footballer or you know he's ex india team captain and he's working in the isl as a coach Uh, so I get to meet people from the sports field. Uh, my mother is a teacher. She's also very prolific with many organizations, Lions Club, Rotary Club. So I get to meet people from there as well. Uh, and I, since I'm interested in academia, I meet a lot of people through my book club. Uh, you know, I meet people, NGOs, people in the UN, and uh, it's always good to hear from different, uh, you know, different people, different fields. And uh, I think that's how you broaden your mind. It's also good to travel. uh it's also good to actually see more of the world than your small world because that's when you realize the world is much vaster and there are so many solutions to many of the problems we have today there are as many solutions as there are problems so we have to keep an open mind uh another thing i want to remind people is that we have to keep a work life balance the ias however wonderful it is is also a job so we also need to have a life outside of it and uh, we also need to take care of our family and friends because ultimately when nobody was there they were there and uh, i think we have to take care of our people we have to take care of our environment of our community so we should not forget that in this pursuit of becoming an ias or even after becoming ias people become uh, very uh, you know hot headed or very egoistic and they become they think that you know they are the best or they are the ultimate i feel that we should stay as humble as possible we should stay as humble as when we were as an aspirant and i think uh, that's how you actually uh, you know become a good officer